What is up, YouTube? Welcome back for another episode of Gago Sneaker Review. I appreciate everybody coming through because today is a special review because this sneaker in particular is one of my most anticipated releases so far of 2021. But before we start the review, I just want to ask you guys, if you're new here, please consider subscribing, smash that like on your way out, and hit that notification so you get notified when I do drop vids. And for sneaker news, sneaker updates, and sneaker rumors, you can always follow me at Instagram at Goggles Reviews. Like I was saying, this sneaker in particular is one of my most anticipated releases so far. It's definitely in my list, and it's definitely a must cop in my opinion. I was even willing to pay resale for this pair, and the hype is real, man, and we're going to talk about why. So without further ado, let me introduce to you the new Jordan 1 High Hyper Royal. Let's talk about it. Following the Jordan 1 High University Blue, the Hyper Royal colorway is easily one of the most anticipated Jordan 1 releases of 2021. With no story and origin behind the sneaker, the hype on this sneaker definitely came out of nowhere. Even with these having a slight resemblance to the Jordan 1 High Tube Greens, for me, it definitely stands on its own. But regardless, there's definitely a lot of hype behind this colorway. This release on April 17th with the retail price of $170. Out of all the blue Jordan sneakers we've been getting lately, this colorway in particular stands out from the rest. Lots of character and texture on the upper, it's like an age-worn type of color tone, which is definitely something I like. This sneaker features a smooth synthetic white leather upper. It's not the best leather out there, but it's not the worst either. And on top of that, you have your rough suede overlay in wash blue color tone. Lots of texture in the suede, not overpowering, it's more of a neutral faded color hue. On the side panel, you can find that light gray new Buck Nike swoosh, very smooth to the touch, and moving up, you can find that light gray new Buck ankle collar. Definitely the best materials you can find on these sneakers. Moving on the ankle flap, you can find your white embroidered Jordan Wings logo. Definitely gives the upper a slight subtle contrast. Traditional flat laces on these, and underneath, you have your white neoprene tongue and your blue Nike tag. Moving down, you have your classic Jordan 1 stitched in midsole, and as you flip it over, you have your traditional Jordan 1 light gray outsole. As for sizing, these are true to size, just like other Jordan 1 highs out there, but as usual, if you want some room, always go half a size up. This definitely feels just like your regular Jordan 1 highs out there, not made for comfort, not an all day wear. But they're J's, definitely something that we wear for style. This Jordan 1 High Hyper Royal is very aesthetically pleasing, definitely a dope colorway in my opinion. So if you're looking for a blue Jordan 1, these are definitely a must cop. Now let's talk about pros and cons. As for pros, aesthetically these are nice. I love the different textures of blue on the suede. It definitely gives the sneaker a very vintage and washed color theme. And also the light gray new buck on the swoosh and the ankle collar definitely is very smooth to the touch in my opinion. It gives the sneaker a very slight contrast on the upper. And out of the blue sneakers we've been getting lately, this is one of the most wearable one in my opinion. Especially if you compare it to the Jordan 1 UNC. Because for me, the UNC 1, the blue on the upper is definitely louder than these. I love the faded look on this sneaker. It definitely goes with a lot of outfit. And if you decide to uh, swap out the laces with different colored laces, it will definitely go with this sneaker. As for cons, with all the hype this sneaker has, it does not live up to the hype material-wise. I'm not saying the materials are bad on this sneaker, but I expected more. The upper is made out of that smooth synthetic white leather. It's kind of stiff. I'm not saying the leather is bad. It's that type of leather you find on the uh, Jordan 1 High Mocha. And also the suede overlay is not the best. It's pretty average. It's not soft at all. It's more of a rough type of suede. But for $170, man, it's not that bad. 
but I would not pay the 400 price tag on this in the aftermarket. But overall, I think it's still a dope sneaker. Definitely a must cop in my opinion. And it's very aesthetically pleasing. And it goes with a lot of outfit. It's very wearable. And But even though this sneaker doesn't have the best materials, I think it's still not bad for what it is. So with all of that, I'm giving this sneaker an 8 out of 10. And also, if any of you guys are in the fence of picking between the Hyper Royals and the UNC1, just ask this question. Uh, what do you value more, aesthetics or materials? Because both kind of looks the same in my opinion. But aesthetically wise, I prefer the Hyper Royals over the UNC ones. But material wise, the UNC one is a lot better than these. So just it's up to you in the end of the day, which one you want to go for, aesthetics or materials. So did you cop? Did you drop? Let me know down below if this sneaker is a cop or a drop. Tell me how you feel about this Jordan 1 High Hyper Royals. And that's it guys. That's my review of the Hyper Royals. If you guys made it to this point of my video, I appreciate it. Thank you. And if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing, smash that like on your way out, and hit that notification so you get notified when I do drop vids. And for sneaker news, sneaker updates, and sneaker rumors, you can always follow me at Instagram at Godless Reviews. Until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.